Good morning. My name is Joelle, and I work at the Swedish Cancer Institute. I'm a certified tobacco treatment specialist, and I work as a nurse practitioner in our tobacco-related diseases and lung cancer screening program. Every day, I help people quit smoking, and this video is intended to help you learn how you can quit smoking successfully and confidently. Before we get started, I just want to um, mention a couple of disclosures. One is that I mention a lot of products in this uh, video, and I want you to know that I do not have any financial interest in these products that are described in the lecture, and I am not a representative of any of the companies who manufacture the products uh, that are discussed in this lecture. Now, cigarettes can impact your body, and that's why we're talking about quitting smoking today. There are many different hazardous contents of cigarettes, and we've heard them all. There are contents that you can't see, but they're folded into those cigarettes, and when you light the cigarette, the combustible gas is inhaled into your lungs and delivered to your body. When those toxic gases are inhaled and circulating through the bloodstream, they move throughout all of your body, and they impact almost every organ uh, there is. Unfortunately, it degrades cells, and it um, causes damage to the vessels, and the body has a difficult time recovering from that, especially with repeated exposures. These would be called tobacco-related diseases, heart disease, lung disease, vascular disease throughout uh, the body, and it can contribute to a host of different cancers. Dependence on nicotine occurs for one major reason. It's a molecule that can be ingested, it can be smoked via snuff, chewing tobacco, or inhaled via cigarettes. Now today we're going to talk about what it means to smoke a cigarette and how that nicotine dependence occurs when we smoke a cigarette. If you take a look at this graph, you can see the cigarette is numbered one at the mouth. The cigarette is combusted, it's on fire, you inhale the smoke, into the lungs, which is number two on your graph, it very quickly transfers from the lungs to the bloodstream, which is number three. It goes to the heart within seconds, and that is number four, and it terminates at the brain, which is number five on your graph. From the time you inhale a puff off the cigarette to the time it reaches the brain, it takes about seven seconds. It's very, very quick. Now, when it gets to the brain, it's gone through the arterial blood system, and it's gone to the brain very quickly, and it saturates the brain with a very big kapow. Inside the brain, you have these little receptors called nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. And these receptors are very um, unique, and they respond very specifically to nicotine. When the nicotine goes to the brain, it attaches to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, they really like to hang out together, and they have a polarity for each other. So the nicotine attaches to the receptors. And when this occurs, there's a lock and key mechanism that occurs, and there are hormones that are released from those nicotinic receptors. When you take a look at the saturation of the nicotine in the brain, it's very interesting. Currently, we're looking at a series of pictures of the brain. On the left, you'll see a brain that has some green and yellow an orange radio tracer that is currently attached to the nicotinic receptors in the brain. That's before a cigarette is smoked. You can see that it's labeled nothing. After one puff, you can see a little bit of the blue saturating the brain. That's the nicotine. When you get to three puffs and one cigarette and three cigarettes, you can see that the nicotine has saturated the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors and the brain is, is virtually saturated with the nicotine. It's very, very effective. Now, when that lock and key occurs in the brain, once the nicotine attaches to the receptor, there is an outflow of neurohormones. And neurohormones come in very many different varieties. Dopamine is the most abundant hormone that is released when the nicotine attaches to the receptor. And as you can see on the screen, there are a number of receptors and a number of physical and psychological effects when those neurohormones are released from that receptor. Now, some of the most common um, responses from those hormones is to feel calm, to uh, feel like you have an increased ability to concentrate. Um, 
people often feel like they can focus, they feel happy, sort of warm and fuzzy inside. Nicotine definitely has an effect on the bodies when the neurohormones are then released after the nicotine attaches, attaches to those receptors. Now that's very powerful because those neurohormones feed the reward system in the brain. Unfortunately, if you don't have another cigarette, the nicotine starts metabolizing in the body and it starts degrading and within an hour or two, the nicotine that you inhaled from that last cigarette has gone away. And if another cigarette hasn't been smoked, then you um, will start experiencing withdrawal symptoms. Now this is the feeding cycle of nicotine dependence. You can see at the top you have a cigarette. Then the nicotine is delivered to the brain in a matter of seconds. Then clockwise, going down to about the four o'clock position, you feel relaxed and feel good because you've stopped your craving. But when you get down to about the seven o'clock position on that graph, you can see that the nicotine levels in the body start getting lower. And then by the time you get up to the 10 o'clock position of that graph, you begin to feel withdrawal symptoms and craving to have a smoke. And that's because the nicotinic receptors are now um, absent of the nicotine and that lock and key has dropped off and there's no more dopamine or other neurohormones that are being released into the uh, bloodstream and feeding the reward center of the brain. And you'll start feeling the exact opposite symptoms that you had when the neurohormone levels were elevated. You'll start feeling like it's difficult to concentrate, people can feel moody, agitated, even depressed if they go without a few cigarettes or for that matter go a, a longer duration without cigarettes. People can feel very physically ill. So here are some uh, lists of the various symptoms that people may have when they're going through withdrawal, either major or minor, and these are very unpleasant. They're so unpleasant that the symptoms often drive people to go have another cigarette. So how do we prevent withdrawal? How do we get you over that hump so that you can successfully quit smoking without having to experience some of these symptoms that you've probably experienced in previous quit attempts? To learn more about quitting smoking, you can visit our website at www.swedish.org backslash quit smoking. Thank you very much and good luck.